This repair video is brought to you by American Backflow Products Company. We are your complete source for backflow repair parts, devices, accessories, enclosures, test kits, and calibrations. For more repair videos and information, please visit our website at www.backflowparts.com. This repair video will cover the repair of the Wilkins 375 AST and 350 AST 2.5 through 6 inch backflow assemblies. The device used in this video is a 4 inch 375 AST, but the repair procedures will be similar for 2.5 through 6 inch sizes. The tools needed for this repair are a 10 inch crescent wrench, a half inch socket, 9 16 inch socket, 7 8 inch socket, and a ratchet. To begin the repair, shut down the water supply by closing the inlet and outlet gate valves. Open up your number 2, 3, and 4 test cock to release any water or air pressure that is trapped inside of the device. To open the cover, use a 7 8 inch socket to remove both nuts from the groove coupler bolts. Once both nuts have been removed, you can remove both pieces of the groove coupler along with the rubber gasket and cover. The cover will not have any spring load on it. To remove and inspect the check valve modules, you must first remove the retainers that hold them in place. You must remove the number one check before removing the number two check module. The number one check is held in place with a plastic ring retainer. To remove the number one check module retainer, pinch the exposed tabs together and work one side of the retainer free. Work your way around the check valve to remove the rest of the retainer. You may also remove the retainer by pinching the exposed tabs together while pushing down on the retainer and moving it downstream. To remove the check valve module, grab the handle and pull the check valve out of the body. To remove the number two check valve module, first you must remove the two metal spring loaded plate retainers. Pinch the sides of the springs together and pull the plate retainers out of the stainless steel groove they are seated in. Be sure to remove both retainers. To remove the check valve module, pull it out of the body. To disassemble the check valve modules, use a 9 16 inch socket to remove the four bolts on the back side of the check. Be sure to not remove any hardware from the spring side of the module as this will release the spring load. Each bolt will have a washer and o-ring as well. If you are doing a rubber replacement, be sure to replace the bolt o-rings. Once the bolts have been removed, you can separate the poppet retainer from the module. You can now inspect or replace the check rubber. The check seat is part of the check module. Inspect the seat and if you find any damage, you will need to replace the entire check module. To reassemble the check valve modules, replace the check rubber and poppet retainer. Reinstall the check bolts, washers, and o-rings. Be sure to lubricate the bolt o-rings before installing. On the number one check module, you will need to install the handle as well, which is held in place by the check bolts. When installing the check modules into the body, install check valve number two first. Lubricate the outer o-ring on the check module and push the check valve into the body, making sure that the rollers are at the three o'clock and nine o'clock positions. This helps to keep debris out of the rollers. Once the check is in place, you will be able to reinstall the metal plate retainers. Install the metal retainers by squeezing the spring ends together and inserting the metal plates into the retainer groove. The retainers should be positioned at the 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock positions. Install the number one check module in the same manner. To install the plastic ring retainer, insert one end into the retainer groove and work it around the check valve until the whole retainer has snapped into place. The retainer tabs should be installed at the 12 o'clock position. Replace the groove coupler gasket and cover on the device. Lubricate the outside of the groove coupler gasket to prevent it from pinching when you install the groove coupler. Place the groove coupler around the gasket and tighten with the two bolts and nuts until both sides of the coupler are touching. To service the relief valve, you must first remove the relief valve sensing line. There are six bolts on the relief valve cover you must remove using a half inch socket. You may want to mark the position of the relief valve cover with the Sharpie as you will have to reinstall it in the same position in order to reattach the sensing line. Be sure to hold the cover firmly as you remove the bolts as the cover is spring loaded. The relief valve module should also come out when you remove the cover. The spring may fall out of the relief valve body as well. The relief valve seat is o-ring sealed and can be removed by pulling the seat straight out of the body. To disassemble the relief valve assembly, Remove the retaining bolt using a 9 16 inch socket or crescent wrench. Once you remove the retaining bolt, you will be able to inspect or replace the diaphragm and relief valve seat disc. To reassemble the relief valve, replace the relief valve disc and diaphragm, being sure that the bead and cup of the diaphragm faces toward the bolt at the end of the stem. Also be sure to replace and lubricate the relief valve stem o-ring. To reinstall the relief valve seat, lubricate the o-ring and push the seat back into the relief valve body. 
place the relief valve assembly into the cover, making sure the diaphragm lays flat against the relief valve cover. This will help to line up the bead on the diaphragm with the groove on the relief valve body. Place the relief valve spring over the seat and push the relief valve into the body and line up the bolt holes. Reinstall your relief valve bolts and reconnect your sensing line. American Backflow Products, your complete source for backflow parts, information, and repair help. If you have a troubleshooting question or need repair help, please contact us at 1-800-575-9618.